Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. This morning we're going to have a show which we're going to discuss some of the things you need to understand about working cattle facilities um, from holding pens to the crowding tubs to the snakes and the chutes, many different things, many different tricks to the trade. Excited about the show, excited that you're here. More after these messages. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed captioning brought to you by Vet Gun with AML and new AMA Abamectin Vet Caps, the one two punch against horn fly resistance from AgriLabs. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. Thanks for joining us today. Today, you got just me. You're stuck with me and we're going to discuss cattle working facilities and some different things that I've been out on sabbatical leave this year in practice with the, the PAC veterinary group and we've spent a lot of time with cattle acclimation with facility adjustments and different things of that nature. And I thought maybe we'd just do a refresher of walking through some of those. But before we get started, I wanted to read a letter here that, that I got in January with this cat from Circle Dot Ranch in Mobiti, Texas. And, and uh, Earl and Carolyn Course uh, are the owner and operators of that ranch. And, and Mobiti is out in West Texas. And I actually did my PhD at Texas Tech University, so I've been in, in Wheeler County and, and uh, the Mobiti area. But uh, Earl and, and Carolyn, thanks for the note. Thanks for watching the show on Sunday mornings. They have a commercial Angus operation and they fi have 500 mother cows and have our own heifer calves on wheat pasture. They purchase several new bulls each year and they're all registered. They have two excellent vets, Ben Ed and Leanne Hillhouse, and their clinic is in Wheeler, Texas. So when we always say work with your local practitioner, those are the types of things and the relationships that we want to encourage to, to be cultivated. Mobiti is located in Wheeler County and is the oldest county in the Texas Panhandle, oldest town in the, in the uh, Texas Panhandle. There's a lot of history there. The Red River War was fought there. Uh, if you get out there, greetings to West Texas. Thanks for watching the show and thanks for the cap. Makes for the show, makes more personal contact. Remember, you can send your, your uh, caps and stories to us and we'll share them. But let's talk about facilities and, and whether you're talking about your uh, cow-calf operation or if you're talking about a uh, stalker operation or talking about a feeder operation, some of the things that we have to focus on is how can we provide a facilities that will allow us to have that human animal interaction with the least amount of stress. And the first thing that we have to do is we have to interact with our animals. You can't just build a perfect facility, bring them in for the first time to have human animal interaction and think they're going to trust you to go through that facility. So we have to get out of the pickup. We have to go out horseback. If we're going to work cattle on foot, you have to start acclimating to seeing them seeing you on foot, whether it's around your tractor, if we have fence line bunks, things to that nature that 
help cattle understand and gain trust in you. We can talk about clinical signs, we can talk about facilities, but until you spend time with your animals, acclimating them to the human-animal interaction and helping those animals understand what it is you want them to do, they won't be able to show you clinical signs of illness or go through the facilities properly because they haven't, haven't trusted you or they don't trust you or you haven't gained their trust. But the first thing I want to bring into to talk is our holding pens. And when we have holding pens, sometimes we just use a long alley that's narrow as a holding pen. And I don't like those as much. I, or we use slants of the same width as the alley. We want to make sure that they're twice as wide as the alley we're going to work in so that the cattle in the back don't get crushed when we walk into the pen to bring the first draft to the tub. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about going from that holding pen to the lead up alley to the chute. Thanks for joining me today for Beringer Ingelheim's Cattle First. When we start to think about labels that are on bottles of antibiotics, it's extremely important that we follow them. The first thing that's on the label, what species is this indicated for? So it might be for cattle, for horses, for dogs, or cats. Once we understand the species that these products are labeled for, what's the indication? Bovine respiratory disease. Uh, could it be for foot rot? There's a list of species, indications. After that, what's the dosage, what's the route of administration, and then what's the withdrawal time or the time in which it's safe to take an animal to slaughter from the time in which the animal was last treated until, until that animal was slaughtered. So, species, indication, dosage, root of administration, withdrawal. All of these are important components on a label, so make sure that you follow them and use antibiotics judiciously. Beringer Ingelheim's Cattle First. When it comes to stopping horn flies, cattlemen love their vet gun. Today they love it even more because vet gun now has a one-two punch with two vet cap insecticides. New AIM A abamectin can be used in rotation with AIM L for effective in-season control. Each delivers a unique mode of action to manage horn fly resistance. So start your in-season rotation program with AIM L and new AIM A abamectin vet caps from AgriLabs. When you're in the cattle business, no matter how much it's a business, it still starts with cattle. It's this basic notion that sits at the core of how we approach things at Beringer Engelheim. We understand when you put the cattle first, it just naturally leads to doing the right things. If you want to do well in this business, you start by doing right. Take care of the cattle, and they'll take care of you. This segment brought to you by the new Hired Hand Portable Cow Sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here, and we're at Kansas State University where I serve as the Jones Professor of Production Medicine. And this year I've taken a sabbatical leave from K-State and gone back into practice with my partners and colleagues from the PAC organization, Production Animal Consultation, where we cover feedlot cattle and stalker cattle and cow-calf in, in all areas of the United States, but we're primarily focused in Nebraska, Kansas, and, and Eastern Colorado. And some of the things that we've learned on, on facilities this year and our holding facilities, as I mentioned before, having a, a, a holding pen that's too narrow winds up crushing cattle in the back when we go to get drafts to come up the lead up alley to go to the, the tub. So sometimes if I, have, if I have holding pens that are slants that are the same width and, and we like to use those herringbone slants, as you see here in this picture, or, or, or straight slants. Uh, what I'll go in is I'll knock out every other fence, and I'll just make them twice as wide as what the lead-up alley is. So when I go into that pen, those cattle have an opportunity to come around me 
rather than just going to the back of the alley and, and crushing those cattle. Vitally important, I think, especially if you don't have cows and calves sorted. We need to make sure that we sort those calves because the little baby calves, same thing with hospital cattle. We need to put larger cattle in one pen and the smaller cattle in the other, otherwise we'll wind up with the smaller cattle getting crushed. Lead up alleys, um, there's a lot of talk about lead up alleys. The big thing about a lead up alley to me is making sure that the lead up alley is consistent in width. When we start to have issues is if we have indentions in the lead up alley where cattle move a lot like water. And if we have an indention, like seen in this picture, you'll have cattle that'll wind up being in an eddy and, and they'll, they'll ball up there and they'll kind of stay put. So we want to have a lead up alley that is the same width all the way to our crowding tub. And when we get to the crowding tub, we want to make sure that, that the entrance to the bud box or to the crowding tub is the same width as the alley that's coming to it. Again, just like water, if we have a narrowing effect, those cattle will start to bunch, they will slow up, and they'll turn around and come back. So the, the rule of thumb, whether you're using a tub system, as seen in this picture, or a bud box system, as seen in this picture, we want to make sure that that lead-up alley is the same width coming into the, the tub. So now we get to the, to the crowding facility. And, and when I think about the crowding facility, you know, a lot of times we think that what we're going to do is we're going to put as many cattle in this as we can and then swing the tub gate. And, and I had a, a colleague of mine tell me one time, he says, you know, Dr. Dan, a tub is not like a tube of toothpaste. We don't just fill it up and then try to squeeze the cattle into the, to the snake. So, the first rule of thumb on a tub is we want it to never be more than half full, as seen in this picture. You can see here's a picture of where the cattle are too crowded, and then here's a picture of where we have the tub half full. The calves are able to line up, line out, and, and go into the, the snake facility. We want to be able to make sure that cattle can see the, the snake or the area in which we want them to, to go. The tub system the big, one of the big things is the angle in which the cattle enter. We want to make sure that we have an angle such as seen in this picture, where when the cattle go around the center post of the tub, that they seem to think that they're going back the direction in which they came. At that point in time, human safety is much more improved, and the cattle will flow much better. When we come back, we'll wrap up the tub, talk a little bit about the bud box, then we'll get on to the snake and the sheep. When looking at the number of farm and ranch operations, the USDA Census of Agriculture says cattle and beef production is the largest single segment of American agriculture. The census also says the average age of the American cattle farmer or rancher is in the late 50s. In order to support the continuous supply of U.S. beef, these producers need to do some business planning to successfully transfer their cattle operations to younger, independent producers. My name is Sam Hans. I'm part of the operation here south of Garden City, Kansas, known as Triangle Lake. Our operation starts with an irrigated farming operation and also involves cow-calf as well as farm feedlot. So obviously the beef industry is very important to us as a marketing tool of those products grown on our irrigated farm. I feel specially privileged not only to be a part of the beef industry, but to have had the opportunity to be one of the original six delegates from the state of Kansas as the beef checkoff system was established back in 1986. And as I reminisce back at that times back there in the early meetings in the mid 80s and early 90s, to me it was very humbling and gratifying to see all segments of the industry come together with a common goal and that was to advance the sustainability of the beef industry and by way of a product that was gonna bring satisfaction to our consumer. Hi, I'm Marissa Kleistuper, and ever since I was a little girl, I have always known that I wanted to grow up and work alongside my dad. He has been my hero since I can remember, and got the opportunity to come back home and work alongside my dad on a daily basis and learn from him and watch the family operation continue to grow. And the other best part of my day is uh, my two boys get to come alongside and work with us and learn from my dad as well. But more than anything, as I look at this whole program, is what it's allowed us to do as a sustainable program in the beef industry and has allowed us to bring future generations into the operation 
in order that the beef industry might be sustainable for the future. My, my pride and my pleasure to have my daughter and her children to be part of our company here as Triangle H. Thank you. When you're in the cattle business, no matter how much it's a business, it still starts with cattle. It's this basic notion that sits at the core of how we approach things at Beringer Engelheim. We understand when you put the cattle first, it just naturally leads to doing the right things. If you want to do well in this business, you start by doing right. Take care of the cattle, and they'll take care of you. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council, improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. We're talking about crowding systems. So getting the calves to the snake from the lead up alley. That's really what the function of the, the tub or the bud box is. And so what I want to do, the first thing I do is I get in and I walk the facility myself from start to finish, lead up alley to outside the chute. And as you can see in this video that I did with a tub, that I'm going to come up and I can see what the cattle are going to see. I come up, I'm going into that, uh, I'm going into the tub, and as I go around the corner, I immediately see two things. One, I feel like I'm going back the direction in which I came, and two, I'm going straight into the, the snake. I can see where it is that you want me to go. Sometimes when, when we have someone standing on the wrong side, the cattle get up against the curved area of the tub, and as they come around that area, all they see is a flat steel wall, and they keep circling. So making sure they get around the flat side of that tub is vitally important so they see exactly where the snake is. You can see as I go through this snake, these no backs can be a distraction to cattle. And you can see that the gradual bend of the snake, when we build a curved snake, when people ask me, well, how tight should the curve be? Cattle should be able to see two or three body lengths ahead of them in the snake, as you can see in, in this uh, snake. Now, as we make the turn, we can see the light from the chute, which cattle are rather, would rather go from dark to light than light to dark. So utilizing light uh, to attract the cattle to come to the chute is, is important. As we walk up through the chute, you can see the louvers on the side that hide the person running the chute. And then as we exit the chute, you can see the mats that are there to prevent cattle from slipping. So just some general rules of thumb, great facility, great facility design, and things you need to think about. Now, when we use the bud box, as we've said on other shows, the bud box system is one that we're going to have open sides. And a bud box is 20 foot long by 12 foot wide. We have 12 foot alleys. The first rule of thumb about the bud box is you never bring more cattle than can fit in your snake at once. So if you can only hold three cattle in the snake, only bring three to the bud box. If you can only hold 10, only bring 10. We're gonna bring the cattle up to the bud box as you can see in this video, and I have a video to let you see what cattle see when they are in the bud box. So here we come up into the bud box. We go to the to this end of the bud box, and I'm looking out in the open sides. The, Bud box is closed. You can see where the person is parked as I look there, not where I want to go. So I turn my head as a calf and I start to go back the other direction. And as I do that, I'm coming back the direction in which I came. And instead of a center post in a tub, I'm going around that person or the person on the horse. And as you can see, they come to that solid sided gate. The only solid sided gate that you have in a bud box is the one right here where the cattle are going to go up against, just like the sidewall in the tub, and they see exactly where it is you want to go, right up to that Daniels double alley. It's a great system. Uh, love the double alley. The, the cattle seem to go in it extremely well. And one of the things about the double alley, though, is, is it, it allows you to hold more cattle. So it's fewer trips and fewer drafts back to bringing them up. When we come back, we're going to wrap up talking about the snake, system on a bud box or a Daniels double alley and the shoot. You're watching Doc Talk. Thanks for joining us.
When it comes to stopping horn flies, cattlemen love their vet gun. Today they love it even more because vet gun now has a one-two punch with two vet cap insecticides. New AIM A abamectin can be used in rotation with AIM L for effective in-season control. Each delivers a unique mode of action to manage horn fly resistance. So start your in-season rotation program with AIM L and new AIM A abamectin vet caps from AgriLabs. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprevo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprevo. Zuprevo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprevo from Merck Animal Health. Do your cattle struggle with pink eye, BRD, or another disease? Contact Newport Laboratories for a customized solution. Our custom-made vaccines are produced using the specific diseases found in your area. These USDA licensed vaccines offer potential cost savings on vaccine and labor. Contact your veterinarian or Newport Laboratories the next time your cattle are in need of a custom solution. Newport Laboratories custom-made vaccine because every situation is different. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey there, welcome back to Doc Talk. We've moved the cattle from the holding pens to the lead up alleys into the snake. Now on the snake, there's two things that you need to know. One, if you're going to have adjustable sides on the snake like a lot of these uh, new snakes uh, have with hydraulics that you can raise and lower the no backs or raise and adjust or widen or narrow the sides then you don't have to worry about things such as being able to fit calves through it versus fitting yearlings and things of that nature if you don't have that option you're going to build a solid sided uh, snake what we do is we go to 16 inches at the bottom and we go up to five foot with 32 inches at the top and that'll be enough to allow you to work calves where they won't turn around or where you can work larger cattle because as they get taller we widen out at the top uh, so that those cattle don't get stuck. So that's something that's important. Now we're here people talk about solid sides versus open sides. If you're going to use a solid sided snake then you have to put a catwalk on the side so that you can get up above and see the cattle and provide the cattle direction to move forward. If you aren't going to build that catwalk and you want to put it on the ground, you can use open-sided snakes. And as you can see in this Daniel's uh, alley, that we have a straight snake with open sides where the cattle are at the same level as me walking on the ground. Now, to get cattle to move forward, we don't start at the back of them with a hot shot or, or hollering or screaming. All you want to do is come to the front of the calf, get the calf's attention, and as soon as I walk past, the eye, which is the, the, the point of contact or the, the point of focus to where that calf will move forward. If you want cattle to move forward, do like this. Get in front, get their attention. As I walk past that eye, the cattle advance forward. As I walk past the eye of the next calf, it advances forward. I don't have to say a word. It's just giving those cattle direction in which they want and they crave, and it's very easy to do. If you're standing behind them, hollering and screaming, not going to work. They don't know what you're going to, they can't see or, or see you or see what you want them to do. Same uh, concept if you're using a, a solid sided, you just get up on the catwalk, get their attention, walk by them uh, against the grain, they'll, they'll squirt forward. Running the chute, we want to make sure that we catch cattle with the sides um, as cattle come in. Uh, it's been described that a calf ricocheting off the front of a head gate is equivalent to us being in a car accident at 35 mile an hour. So decreasing the amount of um, pressure of cattle just bouncing off the front of the head gate, if we can catch them with the sides, that's a, a great advantage, and then catch them by the head. Uh, when we have cattle come into the chute, obviously putting louvers like you can see in this video uh, help us uh, hide the person running the chute 
Uh, sometimes it can be a little bit tricky getting used to catching the cattle because you can't see them as well either, but uh, something that, that'll help you. When cattle leave, we wanna make sure we have good footing, good rubber mats, things to that nature. Hopefully those will help you with some facilities. If you have questions, always ask. You can send us an email and find us on the website at www.doctalktv.com. Uh, shoot me an email. Here's my email address at K-State in which you can shoot me an email on facilities, facilities design. Remember to always work with your local veterinarian. And we appreciate you watching the show. Thanks for watching Doc Talk today. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'll see you down the road. Closed captioning brought to you by Vet Gun with Amel and new AMA Abamectin Vet Caps, the one two punch against hornfly resistance from AgriLabs. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. DocTalk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.